So this is what the outcome of my tank is after about two and a half years of up and downs and learning. It's always a learning process. No matter how much research you do, you always make your own mistakes. And you learn, you learn from other people's mistakes also. So, um, I don't know if you can see it, but my sand bed has been disturbed by this yellow-tailed damsel. He loves to disturb my sand all the time. I guess he wants to make his own little caves or whatever. But, um, yeah, so he made that big old gap there. I still have a, just an even sand bed all across, even all across the front glass. And now there's like this big old mountain right there. And what I can't, that's why I put this frag rack right there because he just kept burying my frags. And I know, you know, they get, they're going to get irritated. They're going to, they're going to stop, you know, expanding and they're just going to stay closed up if it continues. So I did that. I put that little frag rack because, I mean, this tank's going to come down anyway. So I was going to put everything elevated now because even these get covered with a, with sand because my, those, I have two blue tail, uh, two yellow tail damsels and they both have their own little areas where they dig. This one just went in there. That's his little hiding spot, as you can see. And he just digs up, keeps digging. I'll, I'll throw the sand over, and he just goes, digs it up again. All these colonies right here, you know, some frags are still, you know, recovering from. Obviously, that one's dead, but like this uh, red, uh, I believe it's a. Uh, Digitata or something like that. Um, they died, but I left it in the tank, and now it's that. It basically, it's covering its own skeleton again with nice new tissue. Let me clean the glass because I can see it needs a little cleaning, and then I'll continue. So I, I cleaned my glass a little, so just a lot nicer but yeah a lot of these things I uh, I mean basically everything that grew and is big like this is because you know it sustained it basically uh, did well in my tank I guess a lot of stuff did a lot of stuff didn't um, some SPS um, frags are doing well they're uh, growing into my rock and everything and some didn't like my water so and I understand now what, what basically, it's just stability and um, cleaning. I mean, I always did water changes and everything, but, you know, if you don't clean your rock right, if you don't, basically, I use this turkey baster and just uh, fan off all the detritus and everything from the caves and the rock and rock work and everything. And ever since I started doing that, everything looked like it did better colored up, opened up better. Uh, my clowns like coasting this uh, torch coral. I have a, an enemy back there that's basically stinging the hell out of this uh, pineapple coral or brain coral, whatever you want to, whatever you call it. But yeah, it stung the, the hell out of it already and killed off that area where the an enemy decided to be, you know, it's under there. But, and I don't want to disturb it or anything, so. I'll leave it there. Unfortunately, yeah, it is stinking my pineapple coral. You can see right there all that white area. But, I mean, that's where the en an enemy wants to be, and I'm gonna let it be there. <sighs> this one is basically the, <laughs> I need to isolate it in my new tank. When I set, when I put it, I need to put it just like this, where it could only grow into this rock, one rock, and not cover my whole rock work, because it will. As you can see, this started with a little frag, a simple little frag, and now all the the whole rock is covered in it to the point where I'm gonna have to uh, start fragging it out and start trading it or whatever because, and I'm gonna have to. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna warn the people to isolate the rock where they plant it or where they glue it because it'll cover your rock, and it's um, it's gonna cover whatever rock is connected to it. It's already working its way in. It already grew over this Kenya, well, 
you know, around it or whatever. And um, so yeah, this Kenya started as a frag too, and now it's that big old tree. Um, that little posing zanias also, it was just one, and now they're all over the rock. But I have a fish that I made a mistake on that one right there. That one, he, he actually loves softies. And I didn't do my research enough to know that I just throw them in my tank. And in the beginning, he was a lot smaller, and he would just peck, go around pecking the posing zanias, the cania tree, and then my, um, I believe it's, I want to say a cauliflower or one of those. It's a softy. It's a, um, sorry, it's a leather. So it will go pick, peck at this little, the little tentacles, little, you know, tentacles here, then go there and peck at that. And then peck at this, and then there, and that was this routine. Boom, boom, boom. So these were like suffering. They were all nice, and they were like you know they were bothered. They were disturbed. They weren't spreading out like they are now. So I don't know if it just that it matured and now it's ignoring them, or it's just that my feeding routine is better because I have an automatic feeder now. So they get fed um, a mixture of. Uh, this seaweed extreme and that's for my obviously my tangs and you know I used to have a flame angel but he did not make it and I have the other one I don't know where it is but it's the other for just regular carnivores and you know shrimp and stuff like that but it's all in little small pellets where they could eat it and not have any trouble with it because I used to have a little dark fish also but He's not here anymore, honestly. So yeah, I have the overflow there. And I've never been comfortable with it, obviously, because you have the tubes running through the back, and if you lose siphon or the water, go, the light you know, goes out, and the pump, you know, obviously, it's gonna siphon everything back, and then if you lose siphon or whatever, when the pumps, the water pumps pump the water back in, and you lost siphon there, Guess what? It's gonna keep pumping until it runs out of water in the on the sump. So, luckily by accident, I cal I didn't even calculate, but there's not enough water to get pumped back in, so it could overflow my tank. So what it will do is just start throwing bubbles in to my tank until I either you know si um, continue the siphon or turn off everything. But I've never had that problem. Actually, I never lose siphon with. The eShops overflows. I've never uh, lost siphon. I actually have the the 800 model, and I put two two tubes, two U tubes on it. And basically, the only way I could keep it up is to to add another pump to it, parallel to it. So it basically keeps up the the siphon on both U tubes. Or else, if you the pump is a, I have a mag 9.5, and it doesn't doesn't pump enough. So I had to add another extra pump that I had, a spare pump, in series or in parallel. I believe it was in parallel. And um, yeah, it uh, actually helped it. But, you know, I say parallel because one goes to the um, uh, chiller and the other one just goes directly up to, uh, I have a little divider in the back for the for those, uh, two um, lock line. Um, you know, spray bars or whatever you want to call them, the little flared nozzles. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's a softy tank with a couple of SPS. I wish I could make it SPS dominant, but it just won't work because um, my theory is uh, my sand bed is dead and decayed, and it just releases a lot of nutrients that not even my bio pilots can control. So. You know, it's just my fault for letting it die the way it did, disturbing it, and I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna go for a deep sand bed on my net, on my next tank. I think I'm a, if I do, I'm gonna probably vacuum it every every service, vacuum, you know, vacuum the sand bed and everything, just so nothing gets trapped. I don't know yet. I'm still doing my research on that. If I'm gonna leave it a a live sand bed like a I'm sorry a deep live sand bed or not but 
it just took me long. It took my tank a little longer to establish than normally it did because of my own mistakes, I guess. But yeah, this is it. I wish I could have gone bigger as, as far as like over 100, maybe 120, 150, but it's just too much work to um, to actually prepare for it as far as where I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it here, that's where my, my the uh, peninsula tank is going to go, coming out that wall and this one's going to, obviously it's going to go away and, um, but yeah. So I got to prepare to put everything into the holding tank, temporary holding tank. I hope nothing gets really stressed or disturbed or unhappy because it's going to be obviously a smaller tank. And I hope everything makes it through the transition to my 95, 95 gallon uh, reef tank. Basically my DIY sump. can't really see that well. I, I don't want to turn on the light on my camera because it might mess everything up. But yeah. There's my Aqua C 180. Little filter stock. My little refugium. I got the um, the grow LED. And ever since I got that bulb my macroalgae just grows like crazy. So I have to uh, harvest it. I wish I could put it away somewhere but I throw it away. Check check this out right there. Cleaning my glass. Come on, zoom in. I don't zoom in, focus it. Clean my glass. So for a while I couldn't even hold it. My tank wouldn't even for whatever reason, stuff, some stuff was alive, and some stuff wasn't, wouldn't live. Like mushrooms, I couldn't hope, I couldn't have mushrooms in my tank. They're the hardiest of hardiest. I mean, they'll put up with a lot of stuff, but they will just melt away in my tank, for whatever reason. <sighs> of course, I have my testing kits. I have the basic one, and then I have the refoundation by Red Sea to test my, um, because I'm dosing calcium, magnesium, alkalinity and everything, but yeah, I mean, my numbers were there, my salinity was there. Actually, I take that back. Um, when I switched to a refractometer, that's when I realized that my salinity was way below what I thought it was. I, I was using a basic hydrometer and that's a piece of junk. I mean, I guess it's a shoot and miss with that one. You'll, uh, you either get a good one or a bad one, or maybe I wasn't cleaning it right. I would run fresh water through it every time I would test my water. I would run fresh water and rinse it out, but I guess it wasn't enough. But where I thought I was at 1.025, I was actually at 1.019. So I was, you know, I had lower than recommended salinity for a reef tank. and. For a long time I had it like that and I would notice when I would do water changes, the fishes were act funny, um, you know, some I would lose one here and there or something and I was like, what, what the hell? So yeah, I spent the 40 bucks, bought a refractometer and ever since I've been using that, I could say that everything's been stable and everything's stayed alive, but I guess it could be a lot of things. Also, when I started using the Sea Chem Reef Salt, I noticed my corals love it. They really do better. They love it more than the Reef Crystals or the regular Reef Salt. Uh, what do they call it? I forgot. I'm having a brain part here. So now I use the regular uh, salt, the one I have left over. The, um, I use it to, uh, I'm using it to cycle my rock, my new rock, and you know, my new live rock and everything, and it's gonna, I'm gonna use it for the first stages of my um, my tank, just to cycle it and everything, and then uh, 
I'll start using a good uh, reef salt from Seachem because I'm very happy with it. I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be saying this. But yeah, I even stocked up on it. I bought more of it because I just I found it on special and I want it. I want to have it just there in case you know, the price ever goes up or anything. At least I got it for a good deal. All these polyps right there were closed up for months. For months they were closed up. The ones right down that rock, they, were closed. they wouldn't open at all. They wouldn't budge and now they're here. They're, they're open. They're, they're getting recuperating. These two, I would buy polyps from, you know, Craigslist or whatever and uh, put them in, you know, I'll, I look at them like this and they're a display tank and they're a frag tank. Put them in my tank, boom, closed up right away. I'm like, all well, my parameters were there, all my nitrites, nitrates, you know, everything. I would test for everything unless the testers were wrong. Maybe I should have bought a second test kit from a different company and see, compare them. These uh, candy canes, the uh, neon green ones, they were gone. They died. And there they go. Splitting into three heads now. Back from the dead. Um, those back there, those uh, the green polyps, they were pale, white, closed up. Now, I don't know if it's the sea camp salt or what, but they're getting their green back. That's, you know, amazing to me. You know, they're actually getting their color back, they're coming back. This hammer, same thing. Uh, it wasn't as out as it is. These were dying, the ones over here. The like cans they were dying, and now they're coming back. They're going over their own skeleton. These were just there, they're there. They haven't died or grown really much until I started changing up the stuff. These yellow, yellow polyps right there. It was only a little frag that I bought. I used to have a colony and I want to say last summer, last year, before I had this chiller, my tank hit about, I want to say 85 degrees and I lost a lot of stuff. So. Ever since my chiller, everything's been stable. Temperature's been stable, and um, I bought it, this little. I bought this little frag, and even then, it wouldn't grow. It was just two polyps that were barely open. Ever, ever since I changed my salt, I, I changed other things I used to do. I learned from it. I learned from a lot of internet videos and everything, and now they're. Where they are colonizing again, so that's a very positive thing. My rock, as you can see, it had a lot of everything growing on it, and you know they're start, starting to clean up a little by little as I fan them with the turkey baster and clean them up. This one's supposed to be a purple one, but it doesn't it didn't get purple. I recently switched my lights, so we'll see if that makes a difference. I switched to LEDs, and we'll see. Hopefully, they color up and go back to their true colors. I know for a fact that if something loses their colors either because you're bleaching them or because they're not happy with their parameters or your water quality so they bleach up they, they change color because they're not happy. When they're really their color it's because either they're obviously when they they're, they go back to their colors because they're happy. They're happy. And that's the way of showing that they're they're happy and that you have the right water quality and everything parameters because all your cor corals are colored up and just polyp extensions is there and everything so <sighs> we'll see